Imagine if you went on holiday for six months of the year and when you returned, your neighbours had taken over your house. That's the situation facing the endangered Chatham petrel, whose pushy neighbours, the broad-billed prions, take over their burrows while they're at sea. Let's find out how rangers on Rangatira and the Chatham Islands keep those prions at bay. Chatham petrels were once widespread on the Chatham Islands, but same as many of the other species, um, just a combination of, of habitat loss over time and predation has, has really reduced their distribution until um, they're basically only occurring on this island on Rangatira. We think the current population here is about a thousand birds. Why are the prions such a problem for the petrels? It's, it's really a, a numbers game. It's, um, the the broadbill prion is just so much more abundant. We're talking 300,000 birds compared to Chatham petrels, which number 1,000. They compete for the same space, so the broadbill prions um, take over Chatham petrel burrows. Instead of digging their own, they, they'll look for um, existing burrows. So when the Chatham petrel has a chick in its burrow, that's when the broadbill prion is looking for a burrow. So they'll just come in um, and kick the chick out, and can, they can quite easily kill chicks and potentially kill adults as well. And uh, this is a bit of a comparison. I've got the Chatham petrel, you've got the prion. Mm -hmm. So what, what are the major differences here? Well, they're very similar in size and weight. The big difference is the head is very different. Um, Broadbill prion, as the name indicates, has a um, very broad bill, almost three times as wide as the Chatham petrel. It's got a very steep forehead, uh, much more gentle on the, on the Chatham petrel. And they're just the general in the face, facial markings are quite different. What sort of things do you guys do to try and make life easier for the Chatham petrels? When a new burrow gets discovered, we replace it with a wooden box, just like this one here. This just provides the bird with a, a safe burrow, which it'll have for many years. And then there is the entrance, and we modify that. There's, a, a, there's actually a plastic pipe runs from the entrance into the nest chamber. But probably the most important thing for protection is this flap. And Hopefully this acts as a, a visual deterrent and also like a physical barrier. So a Chatham petrel will know this is its home and it'll have an egg in there or a chick and it'll have a real drive to get in. Whereas the broadbill prion will go, oh this is just a bit too hard. It's made a significant difference to the breeding success of the species. Historically it was down to 20% you know, of, of burrows that actually succeeded and it's now currently sitting at about 80% on, on a regular basis. And the burrow has an outer lid, and it's got another lid just to keep the chick nice and warm. And that's what they look like. They're just a big, see, big bundle of grey fluff. This is all downy fur that they will shed. It all falls out, and they get re replaced with proper feathers. But this guy's still got quite a long way to go. He's actually quite small still. Rather than trapping in predator control, scientists and rangers have had to come up with new and innovative ideas to try to solve the petrels' problem. The efforts have paid off and with new populations, the Chatham petrels' future is looking brighter by the day.